mountains, how they are formed, and why they are not taller. Are we there yet? Not yet. How about now? Still not there. Why are mountains so tall? Mountains can be formed in four different ways, causing them to rise to great heights above the Earth's surface. The Chugach Mountains in Alaska are a great example of one way that mountains are formed. These mountains were formed due to accretion along an oceanic continental margin, causing sediment buildup along that trench. As the sinking oceanic plate pushes up against the accumulated sediment, the sediments fold up against the continent to form mountains. A similar process can form inland mountains. A good example of this is the Rocky Mountain Range. In this situation, there is compression occurring at an oceanic continental plate boundary, and the force is such that the Earth's crust becomes deformed far away from the actual plate boundary, forming what are known today as the Rocky Mountains. However, events along an oceanic continental plate boundary are not the only way mountains can be formed. Similar events can also occur along continental continental plate boundaries. The Himalayan mountains are a great example of this. These mountains were formed because two continental plates crashed into one another along a convergent plate boundary. Unlike oceanic continental boundaries, continental plates do not sink under one another. The force caused by the collision is great enough to fold and fault the Earth's crust, pushing up the rock to form mountain ranges like the Himalayas. Magmatic processes can be involved in the formation of mountains, like the Sierra Nevada mountain range. Such types of mountains are formed when magma is produced by subduction at an oceanic continental convergent boundary. The magma then rises up beneath the Earth's crust, pushing up rock to form mountains. The magma eventually cools and hardens. Now I understand how mountains are formed, but how tall can a mountain be? We must consider three values when determining the tallest possible height for a mountain on Earth. First, the Earth's gravitational pull needs to be accounted for. We must also assume a sheer strength of rock, typical values quoted for granite, as well as density. Based on these three factors, we obtain a theoretical maximum height of 45 kilometers for a mountain on Earth. Let's compare this to the tallest mountain on Earth, Mount Everest. The height of Mount Everest comes to a total of about 8,800 meters. However, this is only one-fifth of the maximum theoretical height. Wait a second. If we know how tall mountains actually are on Earth, and we know that they don't nearly reach the maximum theoretical height, then why aren't mountains taller? There are also many processes that limit the height of a mountain. Collisions along convergent plate boundaries can cause fractures to form in the rock. Other events, like freezing, can both amplify already existing fractures or form new ones. Thaw events contribute to erosion. Weathering and erosion can also occur due to precipitation events and wind. Last but not least, mountains on Earth experience isostasy, which in simplified terms means that their elevation is determined by the composition and density of the underlying rock. Therefore, as mountains are growing taller and more and more weight is being placed on the underlying mantle, eventually the weight cannot be supported and the bottom of the mountain softens and essentially melts into the mantle, causing the mountain's height to decrease slightly. Keep in mind that some mountains, such as the Himalayas, are still growing due to collisions along a convergent plate boundary. However, based on what we know, mountains on Earth aren't going to get much taller than they already are.